but we have a lot of good stuff in 1.5.1 version and I will work you guys through for all the new stuff we have in this new version and uh, show you guys how to use it a little bit and uh, feel free to explore more after this uh, demonstration. Uh, first, let me share my screen. Should be... And you guys can see my screen, right? The home yes, page of the house. Cool. So, uh, so first we have a new template, and uh, we have a new template for beginner user to use segmentation. I know a lot of people love segmentation, and we have a simple way that you basically can cut out the human portrait and human like clothes hairs and out of the background. So we now have a template that you can just grab it and replace some of the materials we used and material and image we use in this project and make it your own version as you can see here like um so we have uh, we made it a little bit uh complex and our simple uh segmentation we have foreground uh which is the this shape here and we have a background so what you can do you can just move this around to see how the order of the image changed. So basically you can say, uh, you can replace the foreground and you can replace the background and make it your own version. And also uh, in the background, we're using an animation sequence here and uh, you are able to basically uh, change it to your own animation and make uh, animated uh, kind of a green screen effect. Um, and it's pretty simple. You, If you want to change the order, you, you can just simply drag. You can see I'm high behind the background right now. Um, feel free to explore it and replace those assets in your own version. And you can also add 3D object into the scene and put it behind your, uh, behind your uh, human pottery or so. Yeah, so this is for our new template. Uh, let me bring back... Uh, our homepage. Um, I will move uh, work you guys through all the new UI changes and features in this particular project. So now we have actually have as a library introduced by Greg, and uh, I will quickly work through the new changes for the UI side. Um, yeah, let me make this uh, UI panel a little bit smaller. Um, so we so as you can see right now we have some changes to the ui and what you can use this button to basically hide and open the visual scripting panel and also you are able to open and close preview panel dock undock it um just to give you more space working on the scene or working in the video scripting panel, because I know a lot of people uh, have a really huge graph when they are working on their interactive effect. So we're trying to make it more extensive for you to work on. And also, for example, if you're currently the node is really small and you want to make it a little bit bigger and uh, readable, you can just click on reset. It will bring it back to the uh, maximum kind of size to the current size of the visual screen panel. So give it a try again. Yeah, and also uh, we hide the mini map. Um, you might notice uh, just in case like you were like accidentally like, click into it while you're working on a really large uh, panel graph. Um, so yeah, so feel free to toggle it around and make it the whole uh, environment more comfortable for you work on a complex uh, project. So uh, another thing, we changed two component names, just in case you haven't noticed and you are using it in your old project. Uh, make sure you, when using enable stay before, uh, now we change the name to enable for. Uh, it's the same functionality, but just to make the name more um, 
understandable by a lot of people uh, is the same. Uh, if you are using enable state, uh, make sure you change it to enable for. And also we have a change to interactive object. Previously, the name is interactive object. Now it's uh, changed the name to air touch gesture. So air touch gesture actually have the same functionality. Uh, you are able to pinch, drag, rotate a 3D object in the VR scene, um, but make sure you um, upgrade your TikTok version because if you have any issue with a preview on TikTok using this touch gesture, uh, make sure you upgrade your TikTok to resolve that bug. Um, yeah, that's something for component name changes. Um, and also, uh, we add a functionality to our face masks. Um, so let me show you guys pretty quickly. When you add face masks, and now we are able to uh, configure which face. And uh, let me show you in the preview videos. Let's give two persons here. Uh, two people here, and you are able to say uh, which face the face mask is applying to. So if you select the zero, it's going to be the first face showing up in the screen. Um, but if you click two, both people have the same face mask. And also you are able to just uh, play it around to say apply different face masks to different person's face. Um, pretty handy feature. Uh, feel free to explore it. And also uh, it could be a great, um, how to say, the great feature you can do a randomizer or, or sorts of funny effect. Um, and yeah, that's something new for face masks. We also have a really exciting update to our learning materials. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have more templates for uh, different skin color and feel free to grab the one and test it, test your face mask on different um, skin colors and make sure that is uh, inclusive. And that's really important for, especially for your effect can be used by global users. Um, and also we have uh, add a little bit touch to our eye color template. Uh, now you are able to see our, a real eye kind of a pattern in this template and uh, feel free to uh, apply or blend more color to this eye texture you are making. Um, yeah, so that's for face mask and moving to our new notes. Um, we have this, uh, this, as you can see here, we add a new nose for pet face detection, which I will introduce a little bit later. Um, and also we have head movement detection. Uh, you are able to detect handshake and head nod. Um, and feel free to use it to trigger any interesting effect you are making. And if you're interested in uh, learning more, now we add a learn more button for uh, this any of the nodes in the video scripting now, um, it will directly link you to the learning page we have. Hello, Mingus. And um, we provide a lot of uh, a good example on our website about how to use this node. And uh, similarly to color space converter, now you are able to switch between different color space. Um, I want to introduce, really excited about this uh, new nose TikTok sound. Uh, I want to switch to a different demo project to show how to use it. So, so for this particular uh, node structure, which you can download from our website uh, using this node, uh, volume detection, if you click on the more button, you can download this uh, sample project. So basically it using your volume of the music to uh, trigger the scale of the image change. Now uh, we are allowed to a user to use uh, this audio TikTok sound um, to basically replace this logic here. Um, just break it. 
we link it to the value detection, and then we make sure it can be played um, and just get rid of this uh, audio resource controller. Uh, you are able to preview on your TikTok um, to see, you can add basically any music in the library, TikTok library, and using that particular music to trigger uh, the volume detection logic you set up here. Um, so basically it add a new way. It's like a, how does it green screen for audio. So you basically can uh, use uh, any kind of sound available um, to do all sorts of interesting uh, triggering. Uh, I can, I can, I can foresee we will have a bunch of creative usage uh, with dance and music uh, TikToker um, to use your effect and create certain really vibrate videos out of it. Um, just make sure that if you really want the music play out, you need to link to the speaker in order to play it out. Uh, detection output just to make sure that your uh, detection value get output so it won't play any sound out of it so speaker remember to link it to uh, your logic here yeah that's the this is a simple uh, demonstration for uh, TikTok sound um, you feel free to uh, use other audio detection node beats detection um, pitch all this detection to make your own uh, interesting audio effect. Um, yeah, that's for our new notes. And let's bring back the live demo. Yeah, have, haven't even go to the pet section. <laughs> yeah, also uh, a quick showcase for our new learning resources. Um, we add a LERP. Uh, example on our website. So if you are uh, interested in how to use LERP to make all sorts of smooth transition of movement, feel free to check it out and um, learn from it. Um, and we also add some uh, examples for how to configure animation sequence and apply it to basically different sorts of uh, materials. We can apply it to on lead material, we can apply it to PBR materials, and um, you are able to apply it to something face mask to the image. Uh, we pro provide plenty of example in this particular situation. I know um, a lot of you guys are big fan of animation sequence. Uh, we want to make sure that you be aware of those use cases. Um, feel free to check it out. Um, that's all this kind of um, like minor details and also uh, great tricks for you to start uh, 1.5.1 version if a house. And now move to pet. For pets, we have plenty of good stuff. Um, we have new preview videos. Uh, let me bring it up. Uh, we have, now we have cat, dog, uh, cat and person cat, dog, and person. We have static cat. Oh, static cat got cut out by the background. Let me hide it. We have dog static, um, all cute, cute pet, and feel free to pick the one you like and apply your effect on them. And also we, uh, there was, I want to highlight, uh, we have three, features that you can apply on your pets. First is face insert. Face insert uh, that works for dogs and cats, but uh, I want to highlight something. Let me add a face insert object first. Uh, so you can, as you can see, uh, now there is nothing show up on your cat, but make sure you configure uh, this tracking target here. Uh, make sure that your face insert can be applied to the cat face first. And then you need to remember configure the face type to cat face and, um, and pick their air face area to their uh, particular area you want to cut out and apply to the face. Um, uh, interesting effect you can make uh, is something like you're able to apply your uh, 
cat facing sir to a human, what you will do is just uh, change cat back to human for face binding. And now uh, you basically can um, apply your cat whole face to uh, your face. Um, yeah, it's like you will become your cat's um, dad and mom or something like that. Um, yeah, looking forward to any kind of interesting effect you guys can make. Um, and also this is for face insert. Uh, we are also supporting um, hat tracker for cat. Uh, so hat tracker for uh, so right now, head tracker using face binding. Uh, make sure you are changing it to cat, and uh, we can also apply any object to it. Let's say, oops, let's say for let's add a three D object to it, and uh, put it onto a head. Okay, now it's for your cat face. Um, you can uh, basically adjust the position out of it. And similarly, if, oh, uh, so similarly, you can apply it to a human head as well. Uh, so this is for head tracker. Uh, another step uh, is face liquefy. Um, so now you can see it's applied to the human. And let me open, well, close the cube here. It's applied to the human head. And you also need to uh, just change the, this face binding back to cat. Now it's applied to cat. Um, I already saw a lot of interesting effect around um, TikTok uh, that using this uh, liquify, um, you can adjust it for sure to <laughs> make uh, all sorts of emo like a motion reaction for your uh, for your pads, yeah, that's it for pad feature. Um, just a quick work through for those. Uh, additionally, we have a new notes for pad face detection, uh, which basically uh, will will all put a yes or no answer for whether there is a cat in their camera. So you can use it as a trigger for a detection of their cat or detection of the dog as well for uh, whether there is there's, uh, the dog face showing up in the camera. Yep, that's, that's it.